Hi, I'm Hans Walter Peterson with the Finger Lakes Grape Program. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how to evaluate buds for winter injury. Now when we get to this point in the year, it's kind of cold outside, harvest is done, and now it's time for us to get actually start to get ready for the next season. And the first step in that season is pruning the vines. When we're getting ready to prune in the winter, ideally we have a number of buds that we have in mind to leave on each vine. That number of buds ideally would balance the amount of shoot growth and the amount of fruit that we would leave and give us a nice balanced vine during the year. However, in climates like this, where we, have, where we can have cold temperatures that can kill buds, even kill canes and even trunks and entire vines, we need to be able to make sure that we're able to uh, account for any injury that might happen. So before we start pruning any varieties, especially any cold sensitive varieties, we want to evaluate how much bud injury there might have been to the buds on that vine. So what we want to do is take some samples of buds from throughout the vineyard and examine them and decide how much injury there might have been. Based on that number of injury, that amount of injury, we can then go back and adjust the number of buds, leave more buds if there's been a lot of injury when we actually go through and prune. And when we're taking samples, one of the things we want to make sure we're doing is it's important to be random, but it's actually more important to be representative. And what I mean by that is that in order to be representative, you want to make sure that you're taking cane samples from areas that will behave differently. So in this case, you might want to take samples from areas where you know that there's a low spot where you might get more injury, and you might want to take a separate sample from that area as opposed to an area where you don't have as much injury. Because then you can make adjustments in just the one area and not in another. It gives you more precision in what you're trying to do in the vineyard. In this case, we have a pretty even vineyard, so we've taken a number of samples. We're going to take a couple more, and then we're going to head back inside. So when we're looking for cane samples, as I said, one of the things we're really concerned about is making sure that we select representative canes. And so what I mean by that is canes that we would actually, similar to ones that we would actually leave when we prune. So that means we don't want to leave a big bull cane or a very vigorous cane, maybe like this one here. This cane is just too big for leaving as a fruiting cane. A bull cane is one that has grown a lot. It's not going to be very fruitful, and frankly, it's not going to be very hardy either. So we won't want to use something like this. We also don't want to use something that's really small and tiny like this one, because again, we wouldn't leave this as a fruiting cane, so we wouldn't want to use something like this. We want to look somewhere on the vine for a cane that's a similar size, about pencil diameter, to the cane that we would leave for fruiting, but not in the, in the renewal zone, in the head of the vine where we would um, actually select our fruiting, cane for, fruiting canes from. So, for example, this is a nice fruiting cane right here, but it's right in the renewal zone that the grower might want to use as an actual fruiting cane. So we're not going to take that sample. So instead of looking in the head of the vine, let's look a little bit further down the cane and see if there's another one that's about that same pencil diameter size, but not in an area that we might want to keep it. This cane right here might be a good candidate. It's about that pencil size, maybe a little bit small, but uh, still pretty good. Good periderm all the way up, so we know that the cane is matured and, and, and hardened off well. So this is probably one that we'll take. Now you can do either of two things, depending on where the cane is located. Because this cane is so far out, and this grower uses a cane pruning system, so this whole part of the vine isn't going to be kept. So I can go ahead and take this entire cane and sample all the buds on that. If the cane is taken from closer to the head of the vine, you might want to leave it as a renewal spur instead, if that's the only place you can get a cane from, or just go to another vine. So I cut this cane, we'll take about 10 buds off of this, maybe 11 just to be safe, and then we'll take it back inside and we'll add it to the other canes that we've collected, and then we'll go ahead and start cutting buds and see how much injury we have. So like I said, we're going to take about 10 buds. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll take one extra one just for safety. So let's go back inside.